start on the Derek Winter Trail. Perfect day for walking. Hopefully we could. Walked on probably another K, probably two Ks past Simpsons Gap in order to get away from the mice. And we found this flat spot and amongst some ghost gums. Uh, forecast of two degrees tonight. Right, yeah, just a great time of night. How's the serenity? Yes. Thank you, working dog. I was in like I was working dog that came out of there, right? How's the serenity? In the castle. The classic Australian film. That's right. Yeah. The castle. It was cold last night. Very icy. Dean goes how next morning, six o'clock. Today we're walking from Simpsons Gap, or past it, through to Jake Creek events, aren't we? Stopping for water at Mulga Gap. Interesting little water hole down there. Interesting to see we go past it. How's this for another amazing walk? day to day. A bit trudgy in some spots in this section um, but some beautiful pools every now and then. <sighs> Names is all. Alright this is Mulgrew Camp for the water and toilet. I think Darren and I have just given it what one out of five stars rating. Yeah. Um, toilet, uh, no toilet paper again so what's that? Can you do minus ratings? I guess. Well, but water, water in the tank. So that's water in the tank and that's what you come here for. camping here. So this is Spring Gap. Again, it's a bit of a reserve, so you can't camp here. The water is pretty polluted. Um, camels or cattle um, are obviously drinking and using it, so it's pretty it's pretty rough, the water. Um, it was last year, this, um, this place was full of budgies and uh, finches, so it must be this the fact that there's so much water around the place that they don't have to come into these larger holes. That's interesting, but beautiful. I'm 
late afternoon again now, so it's actually not a bad time today to walk. Uh, that's to cool down a bit. So we arrived at Jay Creek around about five today, so it's a really long day. Um, but we're already trying to smash out these first couple of days. Um, Jay Creek, beautiful background. Look at the light on those trees and those hills. Um, this has got a better, a better shelter with two, uh, two tanks. And we're the only ones here tonight, so we're actually gonna sleep inside tonight. So maybe we'll be less uh, ice on the tents. We've got a long day, we're, we're heading towards Brickley tomorrow. You say that when they're crawling over your face, Darren. Then you tell me whether they're cute or not. Well, that was another night at uh, Jade Creek last night. Um, a few miles around, but actually the mice didn't seem to bother us. They um, kept out in the bushes. It was bloody cold last night, that's for sure. Um, I reckon it had to be sub-zeros last night, without a doubt. Um, really, really nice. It's a stunning space. You can see the colour hitting those the hills at the moment behind me. Today's going to be a long one. We're heading to Stanley Chasm to pick up food boxes, and then... Uh, Heading up to uh, Brinkley Bluff, hopefully. So it's another 25k walk. Um, expecting it to be hard in the afternoon because that'll be the, um, our highest um, hill climb that we've done for a while. So um, the legs are still feeling it. We're getting there. Breakfast. Ice too frosting on the roof, dripping down. out of Jay Creek. Here we go. Day three. Have staffs, we'll walk. So much more water this year. Fish hole. Water hole. Heavy breathing exercise have started already. High route today. We've been gnomes, Tassie, if you'll know. Same high route as us, then she's there. She got away a bit early. Uh, I guess where you really start to feel like you're actually on the track. Because you're starting to head through these big high hills. Really starting to get into these switchbacks now. Coming up the hill. Going on up. Kin on the climb. Darren just told me we're only halfway up this hill. I think I might push him off that cliff over there. Almost top of the hill. How you feeling, Ken? Introduction to the track, that one. <laughs> Beautiful day. Beautiful views. Single campsite at Prappus Burr. Almost at the top of that high route pass. And you get cycad palms on the top of this pass. It's so high. You see birds, obviously. Well, that was a feral hike. A little way to go yet. All right, well, that certainly felt like the Lara Pinta Trail. Um, you know, sort of semi-soul-crushing climbs there that uh, sap your energy. But getting you to the top of tall peaks with views out to a huge mountain ranges. So 
Great right, start. Past fires. So look, I think the high route's worth it. It adds another hour onto that, that particular section. But it really gives you a benchmark in terms of their legs uh, and introduces you to this beautiful high country. Really gets you making it feel like you're on the Larry Trail. Steep. Coming down this. Travelling west, east, and coming up this, this is a real bar. It actually doesn't look like nothing when you've got you take a bit of video, but it's a prick. How's that trail, Ken? It's hard work. It's the real deal. Ugh. On down there. Coming out of Missick Gully. Rock scrambling fun. Ken, making it look easy. What do you think of that? Let it down. Right now, it's probably the best, best time to ask me about that one. But... <laughs> a bit later. later, maybe. Yeah, it's fun little snake. Just in there, just see his head. Half an It's all uphill from here. Off you go. <laughs> This is just typical trail conditions for the lower pinto. Ken digging deep to his master rock climber background. Simply beautiful section through here. Just a K or so away from Stanley Chasm. Suffering a bit today. And we're going to change our plans and finish up here. Which I don't think I would have got any further. Steep ups and downs. All good? Yeah, all good. I think it's the last climb. And there's Lady Darren up there. Stanley Chasm Cafe down there in the middle of the shop. Darren's run on head because he's a fit guy. Uh, his job is to order the burgers and get the beers before the cafe shut. So, yeah, rest cool. time soon. All right, so we made it to Stanley Chasm. I think I didn't eat enough yesterday, so I got a bit bombed out. Carb um, loaded last night, this carb morning. loaded, yes, right. So, we're going to hit Brinkley today along with every other man and his dog by the sounds of it. So, we're going to try and get there so at least we can score one site or two. So, that's enough of that. Beautiful morning. All right, about halfway through the climb to Brinkley's today. Um, always feels better first thing in the morning, like last time, so you feel fresher. Um, and after having a good night's sleep, which is still not 100% true, it still takes a while to get sleeping, right? Uh, but it wasn't too cold last night, and um, it's been a good start. So we're said, trying to find a camp up there, so limited campsites, but we'll see how we go. Run all their way up. I need to go back down again. Just down, right in the middle of the frame. There. And zoom out. Bang. DJ. Lots of coming down from Brinkley. Brinkley Bluff out there. Where we're heading. Darren's way up ahead. He's uh, zooming on. He's somewhere around here somewhere. Gotta walk your own walk there. He's faster than me, so that makes sense. 
it gets me comfortable doing my pace too. You, know what, you love these bits when they're flatter. It gives you a chance to stretch your legs. This section really is a favourite of mine. You really are just walking along the spine. Carefully. It goes up or down. All the way up the top of this. Wrinkley's bluff up the top. Far now. That feels good. Well, that was a really good climb today. Felt excellent. I think I obviously ate a, ate a bit more, so that probably helps. Um, and I was only 10 k's. Still took me probably three hours. Darren got up a bit quicker than me. Um, and when we got up there, the peak of the side, so that's fantastic. Still very quiet up here. One of the chaps arrived. Um, but there's rumoured to be more key people coming up for the west and also east. It'll be interesting to see whether they're going to fit them all in. Sweet at Brickley's. That's the main thing about there. Just the location of the restaurant. Move the ensuite. Down set up. With the staff of Moses there. The light's starting to come. It's good. Hey Ivy! He uh, struggles to catch her. And that group there about to walk down to Stanley Chasm in the dark. I hope they're okay. Right, we've got a full moon, blood red, coming up the horizon at Brinkley. So there's a view from uh, Wrinkling Bluff at sunrise. So over here you can see the shadow from Brinkley being cast. So we're coming down from Brinkley through all these switchbacks all the way down through. You can see some walkers down there. First climb of the day, not feeling it at all. Feels good. The young buck, not even breaking a sweat. That's right. I hope that doesn't mean we have to go up there. Recent fire damage coming out of Pearl Fire Junction, heading to Razorback. Check it out for the damage. Just down there. Spencer Gorge. Let's see what this is like. Spencer Gorge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thought I'd record some now while we like Spencer Gorge before we hate it. Very rocky. 
scrabbly gourds, this one. No nice, neat paths. Lots of ankle breakers everywhere. The impressive red cliffs all around the side of the walls. I think the water holes this time. Just small rocks to get well, we're out of Spence is good, and it was as arduous as I remember, but it's actually quite beautiful. But we're still heading up this gully. Right up to the next section. Still hard work, um, but very fortunately, it's got full coverage of shade in lots of spots, which is amazing. Because otherwise, you tell you what, it'll be bad. When you get out of those gullies and you're on a path again, it feels good. You start with a razorback climb. At the top of this, that becomes a razorback. Got to remember to turn around and look back sometimes. The razorback. Sounds a bit like Return to Jaws or something. Look at that. Back and cross through here, and at the end of this mountain range down at the dip down there, there's French Lily, and then up over there, there's Hugo's Junction at the base of those massive cliffs up there. I'm sort of tucked in behind there, so that's where we're heading. It's 2 30 now. I think the Razorback might be harder to come down when you're travelling from east to west. It's still good fun though. That was the last we saw of him. Started out there somewhere, up and down, up and down, up and down. This is switch switchbacks, switch, 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 switch. and then all the way through up to here. It's now five o'clock. We've been walking since 8.30 with minimal breaks. And we're not far off Hugorge Junction. Which is just up in here. Light's still a bit weird here, but it's a beautiful spot. We made it. We're just camping in the creek. Ooh. And check out these cliffs. Those cliffs there in the morning will be bright red from the sunrise. And we're off. Heading to Rocky Gully today. Um, short walk, only what, 15, 17 k today? Something like that? Sure. So I should be pretty relaxed. Just past Tea Gorge Junction. Pretty. Use the swimming spot a little bit. Ken made the swim successfully. Right now, this is the harder water crossing here, so uh, the far end is coming from the east. 
a couple of techniques we call the Darren technique where you scurry over here like a rat. Um, you've got to have some genetics related to a goat. Um, they seem to do it very well. The other technique is to have uh, one party member swim through this section is deep through there and then shallow through here and then drop your pack from here down to that person walking around here and then scurry down that rock with the pole someone's stuck there so that's in very well shout out to Todd who helped out the other end for me thanks mate water everywhere this year which is fantastic to see Different place this year. So, yeah, this was a small little pond just here last year. Now, oh, yeah, easy. Uh, as you'll see, it tick, it's very plain and simple. You can pick up some good speed along here. Nice guys comes. It's coming into Ghost Gum Flat. So this is our campsite for the night, just two k's past Rocky Gully. Of nice creeks with good sand. Beach camping. Beach camping, yep. Uh, a few footprints that looked suspiciously like dingo footprints, so we'll see. Here we go. Hang our food and our boots. Nice at the river last night, but a bit damp because of the low point. But now we're walking to Ellery, should be pretty quick today. Cool. So, uh, short day, 10k's are about that to Ellery Creek, and uh, we'll probably wash up and have a swim there, so it's pretty cruisy today. So day before was when we started way down there on the other range. I'm pretty sure that's the chewing range. Lazy day at the beach. Especially trained crows get it into your gear if you leave it behind, so get all that. Our campsite at Ellery Creek North. Yeah, we had a great swim down in the hole, cleaned up ourselves up. We only smell a little bit now. Chilly swim. Hmm. Another friend. Can you get bit by a snake? <laughs> I'm not gonna suck out the poison. <laughs> Depends where it gets bitten.
the, uh, no, last night at Ellery was really good. Uh, where we were, didn't get too damp at night, so we didn't wake up wet, which is great. Uh, the snake that Darren saw didn't creep into me, really. So that was even really nice. I did wake up in the middle of the night touching something cold on my leg. And I worked out it was a clip on my jacket, so. I did move fairly quickly there. But that's okay, it's all good. Uh, so today we're picking up some food at the Zapatine Gorge car park and then we're going to try and get to Counts Point. So Counts Point's only got three campsites so it's pretty limited as to who can actually manage to be up there. It's not always popular because it can be pretty windy but it's a uh, great view. One of the reasons I wanted to do the walk again was actually to get that different view from coming from east to west this time. And you know, you, despite looking backwards last time, your views when you're walking towards something are quite different. So I still haven't worked out in my own mind yet, which is better for me, walking west to east or east to west. So that's one of the things I hope to get out by the end of the video. Cruise along at speed this morning. Trail makers could have made us go up that little valley there and cross that saddle there. But instead they've kind of taken us up with this knob because you get a great view through here. So good on your trail makers. I think I'm gonna call this the mini razorback or the piglet from the back maybe. Food drop. Food drop change ever. Suck change. Sucks. Food. Salmon. Food box. Resupply complete. And now we're doing a 9k climb to Counts Point just to see where the campsite's ready because it might not be. So we've just refilled full pack of water, six litres because we've got an overnight camp. New food. And right about now, pack's probably about 18 kilos. I'm starting to think now. Should I have cut that two inches of a toothbrush handle off and dried my toothpaste? Still sounds a bit fanatical to me, I reckon. <laughs> huge climb. Well, climb's gone well, and there's Counts Point, that highest one through there. The intelligence from people coming down from the top suggests there's no one camping there, so we might be in luck. Just a hint of what's to come. Look at that. Six hours ten, eh? Damn good time. From Ellery. I'm walking. Freak north. <sighs> Massive climb, eh? Yeah, it's pretty decent. We've had worse, really? better. Hmm. On a get? bench, top of the hill. What's the view like? On a bench. Well, glad you asked. 
pretty spectacular. That's how we get a good sunset tonight, so there we go. I'll yeah. top it off. All right, that's my humble abode for the evening. Entryway. Cozy bed. Lounge room. In the backyard. doesn't disappoint. streaming down the valley this morning too much cloud on the horizon perfectly quiet and still up here last night this is my new z-pax alcohol zip i think it's called um massive light space sorry weight difference from last year like it's uh, about ooh, five or six hundred grams with the pockets compared to three kilos i was carrying last year just in the pack alone um Pattern's pretty good. I do like this zip thing around the side that sort of means you can open up um, the main body of the, of the compartment. It gets easy access. So. Really like it so far. So we had a good night at Counts Point last night. It was fantastic. Uh, really calm, so we're very lucky. Nice sunset, sunrise this morning. And uh, we're heading to Hermit's Hideaway today. So beautiful and clear. Feels like it's going to be fairly warm at the moment. So we're going to have another full pack of water when we hit. Uh, a serpentine shell idea. Letting down from Count's Point. One morning. I'm loving poles, walking poles. They're fantastic. You see, I've got a bit of gaffer tape wrapped around there. There's an emergency repair option. So that's a low weight option rather than carrying a whole roll. But this is a pacer pole, which is from England. Um, it's got a really weird sort of hand grip thing. So you can actually put a, a lot of weight on both going up or going down. Um, this one comes in three sections, which is great for collapsing down for suitcases. Um, I walk at number five, I climb at number three, so make it shorter, and I length it up to number seven for, for descending. So it really helps me stay quite stable. You sort of end up always having two to three points stabilization on you. Um, and, you know, there's all the stats about taking weight off your knees and body and all that sort of jazz. Um, but yeah, I think it's fantastic. These morning walks are when your body's broken in, you've got used to your back, pack, and um, you're feeling pretty good. And uh, you're just walking around and you're seeing some amazing stuff. It's really, you know, we're very fortunate to be able to do it. Just come off Camps Point, and it's Camps Point's full. There's some great little campsites almost close to the bottom. This beautiful little part of ridge, which is lovely. So, 50 minutes to get from up there, Counts Point, all the way down here. Hell of a lot easier doing them that way. Feels good, though. Weird. Coming into Serpentine Chalet Dam. You can see the Serpentine Chalet Dam. As huge as it is. Yeah, it was interesting. This is very typical ball hut. Got tanks there on the other side. Toilet down there. Covered. USB charger. They never work. Hardly ever. So they don't rely on. So we've watered up at Shelley Dam. We've got, both got about seven litres because we've got enough to walk to 15 k's today and also 15 k's tomorrow and have water for cooking etc tonight. Um, we can also top up water. Darren's got a filter at uh, Waterfall. It's uh, feeling hotter today and no clouds, so it's full sun. So it's a, it's a warmer day. Feel good walking through this last year. It'll be interesting to see what it feels like today.
still a cool climb. Tree. Oh yeah, I love those breezes. That's awesome. Market that says photo point two in Alunga Pass monitoring program. I'm wondering whether that sheer wall there is separate from the one down there. And that the two things are moving in opposite directions or different directions from each other. Look at that, it goes down there. I reckon that's what it is. Always feel thankful to walk through that one. I really like it. Try not to do that one in the dark. It's worth saying it. Staring at I trying to look cool. But we haven't worked at all. Looking hot. Not cool. And it's been easy. Yeah. All of those untrue. That's a slog. Slog. It's a hot day too. Coming into a waterfall, which is a very welcome sight. Uh, gonna rest here. And then we see we push under the top. And that's a nice little camp at the base of waterfall. If you wanna, don't wanna camp up. We made it. So this is the waterfall. It's about similar to what was here last year, actually. Might be fractionless, but it looks pretty clean. So we're definitely gonna filter and drink later on. Yeah, I know there's plenty of water here. Heaps. So what's that one called? What? A soy straw? straw? Is that what it's called? Uh, a soy squeeze. Soy squeeze. There's also the squeeze mini, but all the reports say clogs up super easy, it's hard to clean, and it only weighs like yeah. 20 grams less. We're going to stick a couple of tablets in it as well. Now yeah, the late afternoon climb to Hilltop. We've juiced up again at the water hole. And we just gotta power up it. We'll get there. And that's why we're coming up here. Look at that. Little leaf is flat. Whoa. So what was that, Darren? Was that about 25k day? We stayed last night was just before the 16k marker, probably about two or three hundred meters before. Darren finally working out why he was too hot, left his thermal sort. <laughs> Is that Herbert's hideaway at marker 17? Yeah, I reckon they're great sides, but I still don't reckon they're as good as where we were. Just because. You don't get 360 degrees when you sit in your bum, but when you still got beautiful pieces on there. But perfect with that rock wall. More protected. Yeah, with the high winds. This is where I came last year. It's past the 19k marker. Just that right there. Got beautiful views in the summer. Down the hill, heading towards Mount Sonner, about 170 odd k's in. I am quite liking walking towards Sonner. There we go. It's a real focal point of the walk, isn't it? So there you find the reason.
think we know what's going on here, don't we? Awesome river, I think. Last year, this was just a tiny splash of a puddle up near those rocks. drop box in Ormiston Gorge. You can tell how busy these guys are, they're just going crazy. This is the free box. People want to ditch stuff, lots of gas, a few toilet rolls and needles. I think we regret staying at Ormiston last night. It's um, very busy and lots of campers. Uh, everyone gets up really early, so if you're looking for a shorter day and uh, a bit of a sleep, then that's not the place for you. Uh, probably wouldn't be bad to, you know, get our food drops, have a bit of a swim, get something from the cafe, you know, clean yourself up a bit, and maybe head on another cay or two. There's a few spots down the road on the creek that we can see on the maps. That's probably what we should have done in hindsight. I'd highly recommend getting in and seeing at least the Austin Gorge uh, waterhole. It's really quite spectacular, and the rock formations in there. I mean, it's a good base if you want to use it for another day for a um, uh, rest day or uh, doing the pound walk, that's pretty good too. Here's the spot where we should have camped. Oh, yeah, beautiful river. What do you reckon? K and a half? That's a K. Yep, lovely wide sandy river. Really good spot for camping past Ormiston. Couldn't go wrong there. Glen Helen Gorge up there, so those red cliffs are pretty close. Get excited about water. <laughs> Who's over in the Victorian Highlands or something? Getting close to the thing, River. Yeah, vast amount of water. So, this is Pete and Lottie from yeah. Richmond. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. No worries, <laughs> Glen Helen Gorge. Taking the plunge. Go, Suck it in. Go. Go. How's the water? Tropical? It's the walk through the rushes. Glen Helen Gorge. That was a great swim. Cold, but really cool. So this is the new discovery park at Glen Helen Gorge. They're just taking on over. Well, they're doing actually a pretty good job. Spent a bit of money here. And uh, good restaurant bar facilities. So it could be a good, good spot for either a stopover or your family to come and support you if that's what's going to happen. I think the upset is something good. Walk in the Larapinto Trail. <laughs> in style. In style. <laughs> Thank you, Discovery Parks. Tink. Right there. Enjoy those beers there, Glenn Helen. It's good. Spink River, two mile camp. 
Bay Nick, Glen Helen Gorge, Fall Drive Paradise, Paradise. <laughs> Right up there is Fink campsite, so that's where our water supplies. We've got this beautiful sandy beach here on the Fink River. Just superb. Had a lovely afternoon going into the Helen Gorge. There's our setup, so that's perfect. Go for a swim. Darren and I reckon we made a mistake staying at Ormiston. What we should have done with our rest day, we should have actually got our food at Ormiston and then just carried on into um, what the nine case to the Spink River site because it's um, it's actually been a cracker. It's probably made better by the fact that we've actually got this water here at the moment, and I'm not sure whether that's actually there all the time. I think it's probably not, um, but there is water in the Fink at different areas, so you know. Um, but now that Glen Helen Gorge is open, it's actually you could easily do a rest stay here quite nicely and then nick over. It'd be about five. Five, four or five k's each way, um, which is an easy walk to spend a few hours down there having a swim at Glen Helen Gorge, um, lunch for a burger or something there, and a few drinks if you feel like it. Um, so, very relaxed actually, very relaxed. So, it's been a good spot, but it goes all the way up the creek that way. It's beautiful. Been trying to work out, you know, is there a better way west to east or east to west? And I always felt like I really wouldn't be able to answer that properly, really, until I got to the end, which is fair enough. Um, but I did feel on the west to east version last year that probably from about Hat Hill Saddle on. The walk had finished really, and then your last, you know, 25 k's, whatever it was, was just slogging it out. Yeah, you had some opportunities to reflect, I think, but the walk had sort of finished in some ways. Whereas, what I'm noticing, we're getting closer to the end here now, and it's a pretty relaxing couple of days because of our pickup. But I still feel like there's something more to do at the end, so you know, there's still. Sonda to climb from chapter, I think is how you say it. So I'm already sort of getting that that vague impression that yes, I'm getting close to the end, but there's still some purpose to it. So I like that. I like that. I want to say this is something like the Davenport River. You can get around it by going to the, to the right. You don't have to wade through it. Second to last climb on the Lambert's Trail. You do find your way with the legs after a while. You do get stronger. The bit I was saying about strong legs earlier, that's a lie. Well, they do weaken up as you keep going up. <laughs> really nice uh, with a lot of these climbs you get to the top after a, a steep climb and you, uh, you end up strolling along the ridge line of the hill. It's really quite a relaxed way of you know, finishing 
what has been, you know, quite a steep ascent. Actually, on the other end, opposite side to Sonder, a quiet little private spot. See that that way. Get the good sunrise in this one. Just what you don't want near your tent. So last year I did the heel knocks. I don't know what it was, the original one. It was a wet one kilos, I think it was. And um, I'd heard that there was a half a kilo one, so I bought that. I think it's the heel knocks zero. I think it's called that. So that's what this baby is. Paid my own money for it. And again, it's been fantastic. Um, I still reckon chair, invaluable this trip. Nice to sit down in. This is where everyone comes up here because it starts glowing once the sun hits it. I've been looking forward to sitting and watching the sun on this beautiful rock. It probably has been a real focus of, for me in terms of the end point. Chance to just have a look and watch the colours change. Maybe another good reason to walk this way. So we're coming off the top of Hill Top. Um, it was a great time last night. And there was beautiful light hitting Mount Sonder this morning. There was also a good laugh last night with a folk duo that had rocked up, Strat and Lindor, who suddenly started playing the mandolin and recorder as the sun was beginning to set. It created an amazing atmosphere. It uh, made it really special for the collection of campers that are up there. These high camps are a really good spot to make connections with other hikers because everyone's feeling really relaxed and celebrating being part of something special. So make the most of it. Hate seeing this. Happens all over the place. <laughs> it's my new mission in life. Get rid of toilet paper on the Nice little approach to Rocky Gully. I spotted this little campsite just, what are we, east, east of Rocky Gully. If you want not wanting to start Rocky Gully, it's a great little spot. It's Sonder looking over your shoulder. Just gotta remember to look up here. Hello. <laughs> Adu. Yeah. And Irina. From where? Romania. Ah, hiking <laughs> Larapinta. Amazing. Yeah, just beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. More bloody tissues. This is Red Bank's Gorge. This is the creek near Red Banks Gorge. Good spot for camping. You hit it on the um, eastern side. You don't know it. It's still smiling. We're, We're smiling. smiling. That's no, right. Uh, we have. No, I'm not. No, I'm mad. <laughs> Climbing up Sonder, which is um, in front of me. Behind me is that Red Banks Gorge. So it's about a 14 to 16 k return depending on which is your start off point. Um, 9 o'clock in the morning, beautiful cool conditions, uh, nice time to later start it. And both the packs are about, oh geez, four, four and a half kilos. Feels like we're cheating. Um, so it should be a good cruising day. Climb's pretty good.
Darren's now feeling ripped off. No, I feel ripped off. That's the fourth highest peak. <laughs> you think we need to be going and doing Mount Zeal over there now? <laughs> oh no, more bloody toilet paper. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Now. I've got to start a campaign for getting rid of friggin' toilet paper. See? Here? Little rain on the. I'm constantly delighted by the people you meet on this track. The women are still kicking the men's butts in terms of percentages. But there's singles, duos with the friends, more mature people as well, like me, Robin, Carol, Jenny, <laughs> all doing it at their own pace and their own style. I'm loving it, it's awesome. Look at that dust whirly over there, we hope it's a dust whirly. Yeah, one year's gen regeneration of all these bridges. That was great. 14 days on the Larrapinta Trail going east to west. Great trip. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Well, that was a big trip. It was a great day to climb today, nice and cool, and uh, it's been great to spend a uh, couple of hours up here. It might be way too windy up here to hear this. Lucky to be doing it, aren't we? Just doing a quick drill. Yeah, so brand, brand new, came out of the bag. Teddy slash Carol.